So thank you so much, Sister Christine. Sorry, I'm on the road, so I hope uh, I hope I will be audible enough. Uh, so we're looking at Second Kings, chapter eight. Sorry, chapter six, verse eight to twenty-three. I'll read it very fast, then I'll pray, and then dash into God's word. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place, because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned these officers and demanded of them, will you not tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go, find out where he is, the king ordered, so that I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, thus are more than those. And Elisha prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. Then they would open the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all round Elisha. As the enemy came down towards him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they had after they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked, and there they were inside Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked, and there they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them. Them, he answered, would you kill men you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them and after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stopped trading Israel's territory. The word of the Lord. So Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to, to listen from you. We thank you for your word, which is power. We thank you for your word, which directs us. We thank you because Jesus, you're the real, real word of God. So even as we share in this story, Lord, it's my prayer that we will see, we will see, we will not see any other thing. Vision of you will become clear to us. Even I enlighten us, even as we share with this word. I bring life to uh, our lifeless situations. And Lord, minister to us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, an interesting story that is said before, before us, this particular, even from this portion of Second Kings uh, chapter 6. Of course, the king of Syria is at war with uh, the king of, of Israel. And in this particular uh, situation, we see God rising uh, prophet Elisha for a purpose. And friends, I want us to look at uh, four key figures in this particular story. There is the king of uh, Syria or the king of Aram. We have uh, the king of Israel. We have Elisha. Then we have the servant to Elisha. And those are the key people I want us to look at even as we draw lessons from this particular text. So we see the king of Israel and the king of Aram are at war. And each is looking for an opportunity to crush the other. 
And in this particular portion, we see the king of Aram or the king of Syria taking the first, the first step. You know, he was at war with Israel. And so he sets up camp in a given place. But interestingly, as he devises means to attack Israel, the man of God sent word to the king. You know, God revealed it to Elisha. So that is our third person in this third character in this story. And so God reveals the evil plans of, uh, of the king of Aram to Elisha the prophet, and Elisha relays them to the king of uh, Israel. So he tells him, the king of Aram has planned an ambush against you, so do not pass in such and such a place. Of course, the king of Aram is, is disturbed. Who among us does maybe, who is the spy that is relaying information to the king, to the king of Israel? And of course, as you see the story unfold, is told Elisha, that prophet. So now the king of Aram turns his guns a little to pursue Elisha, to have him, to have him killed. And indeed, as they try to pursue him, they, they come and surround him. They come and, sur and surround him. And so the king of, sorry, the servant to Elisha is very, very worried. When the servant of the man of God got up and went early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. The servant of Elisha is very, very much disturbed because they are being surrounded. And that is the fourth character, friends. And listen to what Elisha says. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, oh, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. That's another point I want us to take note. That even in, in all this, Elisha is confident. Elisha says, you know, God, open the eyes of this servant that he may see. So the servant was seeing a mighty army that is going to destroy them. But Elisha is not moved. Elisha is steadfast. Elisha is at peace. Instead, he prays, Lord, open his eyes that he may see, that he will understand that there is a vast army, the heavenly hosts are around us, the heavenly hosts are fighting on our side. And indeed, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So the servant was able to see, oh, we are not alone. There is a mighty army that is at work. There is a powerful army that actually God has brought around, around us. And so, as now the enemies come towards him, Elisha prays, strike these people with blindness. And indeed, God strikes them. Take note, for the servant of Elisha, he was blind in a way. And, 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 and Elisha prays, Lord, open his eyes. Now for this army, he prays, the opposite. Lord, strike them with blindness. And friends, those are key things for us to take note as we wrestle with this particular portion of, uh, of Scripture. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. And then Elisha <laughs> leads them. It's a very interesting thing. This is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I'll lead you to the man you are looking for. And interestingly, remember they were looking for Elisha, but he doesn't. He tells them, I'll lead you to the man you are looking for. And he leads them to the king of uh, of, of, of Israel. And as they come to the king of Israel, he again prays in verse 20, Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they may see. <laughs> so it's interesting that there is a blindness that Elisha's servant had. Then there is a blindness that, that Elisha is praying over these fellows. And now when he presents them to the king of Israel, he prays that that blindness is taken off, that they will see then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and there they were inside Samaria. Now, let's go back to the king of, 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 of Israel. When the king sees this, he says, shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? And, this, and Elisha tells him, do not kill them. He answered, would you kill men you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and go back to their master. So the king sees an opportunity. These people have been brought. They are in my care. I must deal with them. 
I must kill them. After all, they are my arch enemies. But Elisha stands and says, remember the word. In Deuteronomy, it is clear. Once you've captured, you know, prisoners of war, you are not meant to even lay a sword. You're not meant to even lay anything against them. You must instead feed them. You must instead clothe them, work according to the word of the Lord. And indeed, a feast is prepared at the end of the day. Then actually that sorted the whole problem because it ends by saying, so the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. And friends, for me, in my, in my analysis of this text, that is the gist of the matter in this text. That last part, so the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. So friends, we see what was happening. Israel and Aram were always at war. But friends, our God is a God of peace. Our God is a God of reconciliation. Our God is a God who has actually reconciled us to himself and has committed to us to, 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 to us the message, the ministry of reconciliation. And actually, as we wrestle with this text, friends, it is easy for us to think more from the point of, of, of Elisha dealing with the enemy. But that is not the main point, friends. The main point is we see reconciliation at the end of the day. We see men, nations that have been at loggerheads now turning, putting their arms down. We see two nations, that, that two kings that have wanted to, to tear each other apart, now coming and, and, and no one no one is going to raid the other. Why? Because there is a man that God has raised. There is a man that has the vision of God. There is a man that is focused on the word of God. There is a man that actually has understood the power of God. There is a man that is actually allowing to be used of God. And instead of maybe him saying, since they are blind, let me lead them somewhere to kill them. No, he leads them to a place and he causes a reconciliation. Friends, this is what God has called us. I know many times when we are faced with enemies, we are thinking of how do I destroy them? How do I bring them to shame? But friends, what a challenge that is set before us that at the end of the day, we see that these two enemies, none now goes back to raid the other because God has showed them that their vision is a wrong vision. The vision that the king of Aram had was a wrong vision. So Elisha prays let that blindness be taken away. The vision that the king of Israel had of destroying the Arameans, God changes it. God changes it. And actually, Elisha, God through Elisha challenges him that remember, I am God of peace. I am God of reconciliation. I am God who wants you, who wants you not to, to think the way you think. I am not a God who is interested in conflict. I'm a God who is calling you to a point of reconciliation. And friends, as I was thinking through this text, I remembered the past, the, 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 the words, the, the words, the words in Romans 12. I'll run there. Romans 12. Romans 12 verse, I'll start from verse 17. He says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And friends, this is exactly what is happening. Good is overcoming Evil. The, 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 the Elisha orders the king of Israel prepare a buffet for these your enemies in accordance to God's word that these your enemies will never, never do this again to you. And indeed, that is what happens. You know, as, as the word says, you know, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, do this to him. And in doing that, you will heap burning coals on, on him. And indeed, that is what is happening, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. 
So friends, one of the take homes, friends, is that I pray that the blindness that we have, God will deal with it. The blindness about our enemies. I know a number of us on this call may have, when you think about your enemy, you think about how do I deal with them? How do I wish them bad? How do I, uh, uh, how do I kill them if possible? How do I do bad to them? But God is calling us to a radical love. It's my prayer that whatever has blinded us, you know, the Bible says we are, they, they have been blinded by the evil man of this world. The evil man looks at revenge. The evil man look, 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 looks at doing bad to others. But listen, Elisha stands in the place of what Jesus has done for us. Remember when Jesus was slapped, you know, when he, when he was ridiculed, when they did all this, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So that's exactly what God is calling you and me to, to that radical love where we are forgiving, to that radical love where is when, when, when we get opportunity to harm our enemies, instead we do good to them. Because that's what Elisha does. As they come to him, they are looking for him. And as he prays, yes, you know, he doesn't do them harm. Despite the fact that the heaven's army is available, he does not wrongly employ the heavenly army. He knows God has delivered these men in my hands, not for me to do them harm, but for them to see God's glory. God has delivered them in my hands, not for me to utilize, you know, whichever weapons that God has given me in the wrong way, but that I will lead them to that place where actually all oh, this is going to be to be resolved. So, friends, as I come, as I come to a conclusion, amidst the threats from evil, let's remember that God is on our side. God is on our side. And as God is on our side, God is leading us to that place where they we are going to treat those passively enemies must draw them to himself. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of heads will not stand against it. So many times we are fearing, we are fearing this and that, but God himself will work his own purposes. Elisha was immovable because of his faith. And God calls us to the same that we look to Jesus in every situation. So friends, as I come to a conclusion, I want to pose a few questions. When you are at war with certain men and women, what is your view in that war? What is your view in that disagreement? What is your view in all this? The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling me to be men and women of reconciliation. You know, Second Corinthians 5, God has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Christ has reconciled us to himself. And that's what God is calling you and me too. Not to, 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 to be on battle after battle, but amidst the, the battles that we are drawing men to God. And friends, as, as it concludes, so the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. That's what God perceives. That's what God envisions from us. That you and me will be agents. You and me will be agents where warring factions are coming to the table. Only Jesus brings that peace. And Jesus wants to use you. Jesus wants to use me. The way God used Elisha to bring peace between the king of Aram and the king of Israel. So amidst, you know, conflict, what is your role? Is it to fuel the conflict or to be a source of reconciliation? God is, is calling you and me. Uh -huh. Then the other question I want to pose, how have you viewed those that you perceive as enemies? What do you wish them? The Bible is challenging us to do good. God has called us for good works, which Christ prepared in advance for us to walk, to walk in. The best way to fight our battles, friends, is to do good. To do good. And the writer to Romans says, in that way, you will heap burning coals. So as I come to a conclusion, friends, I want to leave it to you. May God challenge us about our attitudes. May God deliver us, friends, from the attitudes of uh, God deal with this enemy, destroy him. May God forgive us 
And it is said that even as Christians live in our prayer life, that's the way we've, we, 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 we've taken on our past enemies. What a challenge, friends, that Elisha poses for us today. What a challenge that the word of God brings to us today. So can I make this conclusion, friend? God has not called you to wish others bad. God has called you to do good. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Lord, I pray you will start with me this particular evening. I must confess many times I've wished others bad, Lord, forgive me. Lord, for the rest of us who are on this call, I pray you will deal with our deep-held hatred, our deep-held long, long sitting, you know, you know, wishes for others who are whom we perceive as enemies. I will wish them bad. Instead of reconciliation, Lord, we have not even sought that bath. Lord, I pray that you will forgive us. But this evening, Lord, I pray that you will feed us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord will walk path of reconciliation. We will walk path, Lord, that will draw men to you. So, Lord, remove every blindness of our, of our lives that we will see. We will see clearly the way you see. We will see people the way you see them. Human beings are valuable before you. We are reminded in your word, you loved the world that you gave Jesus. Lord, even when the world was sinful, you did not wish bad for it. You wished redemption for it. Lord, may we take on the lenses of you day by day. So deal with our blindness, Lord. Deal with our blindness. We surrender and yield to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I want to thank you, Reverend Mr. Mukadaiga, for the great word, for allowing God to use you. Now, let us receive the word as it has come. Father, we want to thank you so much. We receive your word. You have spoken to us so well. Each one of us is checking, checking, checking now, checkpoints, checkpoints, what we have done the otherwise in the other way, other than doing the way Elisha did it. We accept the word you've given unto us, and we are willing to be hearers and doers of your word, King of glory. Father, bless your servant as he has labored to bring your word. Bless his family, bless the work of his ones, his works, especially of his hands, especially uh, working, working for you in the vineyard. Father, we pray that whatever is ahead of him that may hinder his, his serving you. May you avert it and give him victory in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, there are, there are points here that he has brought out to us, which are obvious, but yet not so obvious. This story tells us how Elisha dealt with a problem. I, for one, I think I would get there and do otherwise, like the king of Israel would have done would have done if Elisha wasn't around. But we see that Elisha was asking God everything. So may we employ that as well. To ask God every moment we are stuck with an answer. That we may don't do we may do what is not contra we may do what is acceptable to God. As we see Elisha standing in the gap for both groups to be to end well and to end in reconciliation, let us emulate the word that has been given unto us. Let us pray. King of glory, our heavenly Father, we thank you for releasing us to go and be and be people who bring peace and reconciliation in the world. As we see, the world is in turmoil. It's really in turmoil. So we need people, start with us, O oh Lord God, to be released spiritually by seeking to, do, to bring peace in every situation, seeking to bring reconciliation, not divide, but to bring reconciliation at all times, to have kind hearts at our enemies. Indeed, when somebody does something to you and you think you are innocent, you'd think of revenging when you get an opportunity, like this king of Israel. 
but it's not the way. The Lord is calling us to bring peace and total peace and reconciliation. Father, we come to you that, and we ask you to help us to overcome evil with good. Always overcome evil with good because you've always been telling your children to do that. That's what you even told uh, Cain, that don't allow evil to overcome you, and he did. Father, help us to do like Elisha, not like uh, Cain did. Father, we are but mortal people. We are just flesh and blood. We pray that you help us to overcome, to overcome and employ the weapons that you give us in Ephesians. Fight with those, we use those weapons of warfare, not carnal weapons, Lord God, but those spiritual weapons that are mighty through you. Father, we have spiritual blindness. We pray that you hope it will help us to open. May you open our eyes that we may have our eyes open to do the right thing. Close our eyes from doing wrong and open our eyes to do right. Always to see you in every situation and put you ahead of every of, of everything, ahead of every challenge and bring reconciliation and peace. Yes, King of Kings, you said you sent us out in Second Corinthians chapter five to go and be recon to bring reconciliation. It's a command. We pray oh God that you help us to obey your commands. Lord, you say that you're calling us to always do good and use the radical love. That radical love is not easy, not so easy. But you re when we are seeking to do your will, I know that you're going to help us and enable us to use that radical love and love our enemies and bring peace, uh, total peace and reconciliation as we see the conclusion of this, this uh, scenario in the word of God, in your word. Father, give us good attitude, not attitude of revenge, but re help us to re redo our prayer lives that we may pray rightly, to pray for your will to be done, not our way, but yours be done. Sometimes we may even do it in tears because we must do the right thing, but we must do the right thing. We are praying, God, that you help us to employ, to employ your eyes, to see good out of evil, to see preachers out of madmen, like that man in Mark chapter 5, the man who was cutting himself with stones. As the other people are seeing a, a man who is full of religion, you are seeing a preacher. Lord, we pray that as we seek to, do, to bring peace and reconciliation, we may have your eyes and not our own eyes. Remove the blindness that is in us and give us your, your, your sight, O King of Glory. We commit everyone that has been on, the, on call, on this call, and those who will listen to this preaching later, that we may be people to bring peace and reconciliation, to have open eyes and open mind, to always seek to do your will, O King of Glory, and fight our wars, and give us victory without without waging war or even spilling blood. Father, help us to love our enemies, to love our enemies with that radical love, because without loving them, we will not have the radical love to bring reconciliation and peace. King of Kings, we thank you for the night that is ahead of us. People who are still on their way that you help us get home safely and give us a beautiful night. Protect us. We want to remember those who are not well, we want to remember those who are challenged in one way or another, those who are, are stranded. We want to remember those who are spiritually uh, in prison, spiritual and physical prisons, Lord God, that you take us out of them. Deal with our hearts, deal with our hearts, O King of Glory. And may you remove the hearts of stone and give us a heart of flesh that we may always remember you when we are acting, when we are doing anything, when you are speaking things that don't please you. Be magnified, O Lord God. Be glorified. Even as we go home, we pray a blessing upon us and that you lead us in every way. Even as some may be already home, bless each one of us. Bless our families. Bless our coming in and our going out. Bless the work of our hands. Help us to go and emulate you to bring peace and reconciliation. There may be someone who is challenged in such a way. 
may the Lord God bring peace and reconciliation using the radical love. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen.